After his victory last Thursday over progressive challenger Cynthia Nixon, Andrew Cuomo decided to do exactly what Hillary Clinton did in 2016. Give all the people you need for the general election the middle finger. Because he decided to gloat about his victory and he also said some really interesting things that belittled the progressive movement. Now, by comparing what he's doing to Hillary Clinton... I don't think that this is going to cost him the general because New York is a very, very blue state. But you still shouldn't push voters away that you need to come out and support you. That's a horrible strategy. But nonetheless, he's kind of doing that here. So as Aaron Durkin of The Guardian reports, New York's Democratic governor Andrew Cuomo has said the so-called insurgent progressive wave in his party is not even a ripple, arguing that it's pragmatists like him who can get things done who are the true progressives. Cuomo, a two-term Democratic incumbent on Thursday, defeated challenger Cynthia Nixon by a 30-point margin, turning back the latest attempt by a newcomer from the left to unseat a Democrat favored by the establishment. The governor, viewed as a potential 2020 presidential contender, used a victory lap press conference on Friday to make a forceful case for his own vision of the party. I'm not a socialist. I'm not 25 years old. I'm not a newcomer, he told reporters at his Manhattan office. But I am a progressive, and I deliver progressive results. Cuomo was fighting back against another narrative that has taken hold in the party, that the upset win by New York's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a Democratic socialist who knocked off the powerful representative Joe Crowley, said off a domino effect in primaries around the country, including upset wins by progressives running for governor in Georgia and Florida and for a congressional seat in Massachusetts. Where was that effect yesterday? Where was it? Cuomo asked. Instead, he said the win by Ocasio-Cortez in Queens in June was merely a fluke explained by the timing of the vote, which resulted in low turnout. The statewide primary this week, by contrast, saw a spike in turnout and Cuomo bragged that he got more primary votes than any governor in history. History. That is a wave, he said, on the numbers, not on some Twitter sphere dialogue where I tweet you, you tweet me, and between the two of us, we think we have a wave. We're not even a ripple. Now, what I find interesting is that throughout all of that diatribe, he claimed to be a progressive while simultaneously was denouncing and shitting all over the progressive movement. So, this was kind of him spitting in the faces of all the progressives that came out to vote for Cynthia Nixon. If you didn't already know, if you were one of the maybe three people in the country that didn't know that this guy was full of shit, this should settle it for you once and for all. Andrew Cuomo is full of shit. And as the governor, you shouldn't really boast about winning, especially given all of the voter suppression that continues to go on in New York, which always happens to hurt progressives. So in 2016, if you'll recall, more than 100,000 voters were purged from the voting rolls. And this time, prominent progressives vocalized the problems that they were having. Michael Sonato claims that his girlfriend wasn't able to vote because they said she wasn't registered as a Democrat and they wouldn't even give her a provisional ballot. And then you had Namiki Konst say that she was also excluded from the rolls and she was given a provisional ballot. And there were other individuals that cited similar stories. But the problem with provisional ballots as Tom Hartman explains, is that over 95% of provisional ballots are never counted. Provisional ballots were created by George W. Bush's Help America Vote Act in 2002, which handed billions of dollars to the states to buy electronic voting machines. If you get one, fight it. So, I mean, I don't see how you can gloat about the results if all of this voter suppression is going on in your state, Andrew. Republicans... They always do a lot of voter suppression out in the open, right? They do these racist voter ID laws that disproportionately affect people of color. And Democrats rightfully fight them on that. But Democrats themselves do nothing to fight voter suppression that harms progressives in their own party. And it's because it's one of those instances where they only care about something when it affects them. So if Andrew Cuomo somehow lost, which I doubt that would happen, but if he lost to a Republican, he would probably 
um, blame voter suppression in the event he was running in a different race where gerrymandering or voter ID laws were uh, something that was required to vote because that would hurt him against the Republican. And if he chooses to run for president, that may very well hurt him. But in spite of all these issues, I do want to address some things here because he claims that, you know, it was a sweep. There were no progressive victories, but that's actually being disingenuous because even though we lost some really big races, I mean, Cynthia Nixon, Zephyr Teach Out, they lost. And that sucks, right? Jemaine Williams was another one. But what he's not talking about is that the IDC was wiped out in New York. Progressives defeated the most conservative Democrats in the state. And we're seeing this trend kind of around the country that at more local races, progressives tend to do a lot better at the state level, at the municipal level. You know, when progressives run for city council and state legislatures, they tend to do a lot better if they're challenging incumbents. So, with that being said, though, it's still very difficult for us to primary corporate Democrats at the national level. And there is a grain of truth to what he's saying with regard to them not being successful. Although I think it's bullshit to say that Ocasio-Cortez's victory was a fluke. I think she just did a better job. She outworked the competition as she puts it. I think that's true. So, with that being said, though, he is correct when it comes to, by and large, most of the attempts to primary corporate Democrats have largely failed. That's the underlying implication of what he's saying here. And he's not wrong. He's just an asshole. <laughs> but here's, here's the thing about this that we have to keep in mind. First of all, incumbents always have an advantage because voters, by and large, are risk averse. They're almost always willing to go with who they know as opposed to someone who they don't know because unpredictability is something that voters and self-interested self individuals in general just don't like, so they try to avoid it. So that's, that's one thing, right? Just being an incumbent is a huge advantage. Second of all, there's always going to be that disadvantage when it comes to money because since progressives don't take corporate PAC money, since they're being principled, they're put at a disadvantage because their opponent, the corporate Democrat, can then raise millions of dollars, outspend their progressive challengers 10 to 1, maybe 20 to 1, you know, in certain circumstances, and just crush them. Yeah, that's not too surprising because studies show time and again that the candidate with the most money in most instances is going to be victorious. And it seems like the higher you get, the harder it is to beat that incumbent because anyone like Paula Jean Swearingen, um, Carrie Evelyn Harris, who challenged senators, that was a lot more difficult. So it's easier for progressives to win at the local level, city council, state government. It's a lot more easier to primary corporate Democrats there. Additionally, name recognition is super, super important. This is something that I found to be really successful with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a lot of people in her district said that they couldn't go anywhere without seeing her face and her name on a flyer in a store. Local businesses all had her flyers up. This is something that's really important. It's a strategy that I think that more individuals should utilize going forward um, because getting that name recognition out there is so fundamentally important because these candidates also don't have media coverage most of the time. So... Name recognition does a lot. That's also part of it. Another part of it is, um, another takeaway really, is that corporate Democrats, even if they know they're going to win and they have the advantage, they despise being primaried, which gives us all the more reason to continue primarying them. Because so long as they are being primaried, their feet is being held to the fire, right? It'd be better if they lost, but their feet's still being held to the fire. And that's really important. So, I mean, at the end of the day, 2018 and these primaries... This was a great learning experience for progressives. This is the first time the progressive movement has been put to the test. And we did a lot better at the local level than we did at the national level. That's obvious. If you look at our revolution, uh, I think about half of the candidates they endorsed ended up winning. And that's because they endorsed candidates at all levels, as opposed to organizations like Brand New Congress and Justice Democrats that only endorses at the national level, as far as I know. Um, but... We, we need to take what happened in 2018 in these primaries and learn what we can do to improve our odds going into 2020. First, we got to make sure that we beat Republicans, at least take back one house in Congress. That way we can handcuff Donald Trump and 
Republicans can't get any of their insidious, disgusting bills through. Um, and second, we really need to hit the ground running in 2020. And if you're feeling discouraged about 2018, I think that our odds might improve in 2020 if it is the case that Bernie Sanders is able to successfully make it through a Democratic primary. Because if he's at the top of the ticket, we already know that Bernie Sanders generates a lot of enthusiasm. So hopefully that could that could help progressives. Hopefully he will endorse some progressives who are primary and corporate Democrats who chose not to endorse him, right? Because if they're not going to endorse him, if they're going to endorse someone like Joe Biden, Cory Booker, or Kamala Harris, fuck them. So hopefully he'll see that and he will only endorse progressive primary challengers. But certainly we need to not be discouraged by the results because they were mixed to shitty for progressives. We need to try to dissect what happened and learn from it so that way we can improve our odds uh, in the future because I think that what we're doing is still worthwhile and I'm certainly not going to give up. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.